Assalamu alaikum students. Today we are going to learn about the control constructs. But uh, before moving towards today's lesson, I want to discuss about O level computer science paper two. The paper two has two sections. Section A is based on pre release material that is given to the student before the examination so that they can write the pseudocode of that program and make a program then run it and check out whether it's working fine or not so the 20 marks questions are set are given in the section a and they all are from the previous material the section b has questions about the pseudocodes the flowcharts and the database. So today's lesson is going to be very, very important because you will learn about the control constructs that is the backbone of pseudocode and program writing. So that lesson, uh, today's lesson is going to help you out when you will be working with your pre-release material Okay, when you start working for your release material, it, it will help you out. And uh, secondly, when, uh, uh, when the questions you will see in the section B that are based on the pseudocode, so you'll be able to answer these questions as well. So let's move to the, towards today's lesson. So we are going to learn about the control construct, the very first thing, uh, what is mean by the control construct. Secondly, what are the different factors of the control construct? There is sequence, assignment, loop, and repetition, selection, and condition statements. So let's begin. The very first thing, the control construct itself. What it is? The control construct determine the flow of execution of the program. The pro as you know that the program is a set of instructions and the different instructions are written in one sequence. So if you want to execute one specific statement at some time, at some point, so you need to control your program. Okay, if there is no control constructs and there are no control constructs used, so whatever the sequence you have followed while you were writing the uh, program, the same sequence is followed. So the first part of the control construct is the sequence. The computer program uh, is written in the different statements. So when we execute the program, so the same sequence is followed means the same order is followed. For example, in front of you, you can see the program here. It is written, print, enter your name, the first statement. The second statement says, input name. And the third statement says, hello, name. What is happening in this program? In this program, the first, firstly, the message will appear in front of the screen for the, uh, for the user and it will say enter your name and then it will take the input from the, uh, from the user. And when the person enters uh, the name, so the third message will appear, the uh, second message will appear and it will say hello to that person who has entered. So the, these statements are going to be executed in the same order as they are written. Okay, so that is the very first thing, the sequence. I hope that you must have understood that what is mean by sequence. Sequence means the order of the statements in which they are written and they're going to be executed. So let's move to the second thing, that is assignment. Assignment is storing values in arrays or in variables. So all of you know that what are the variables and what are the arrays. There are some examples in front of you. For example, 
here you can see that day it is written day so the friday the value of friday is going to be stored in the variable day in the second statement you can see that it is written at and a character p is going to be stored in this variable in the third statement a student name and the index position of this array number two on the second position whatever the value of name is there it is going to be stored in this array okay so here at this point you should understand that in assignment during the assignment you can directly assign the values as in these two examples the values are going to be stored secondly you can store the value with from one variable to another variable and you can store the value after performing some sort of calculation in the fourth example you can see that total is equal to total plus number means whatever the previous value of uh, total was there the value of number is going to be added into it and whatever the total is there it is going to be stored in total means the totals value is going to be incremented with the value of number the third thing is selection and condition so sometimes it happens in our programs while we are making the program at that time that we need to execute one specific statement in one specific condition in some situation for example here you can see in this program in the first statement it says print enter age it's a message it will simply display on the screen then the user will enter the age here in the second statement and the third statement it will be checked that which statement should be executed either you are allowed to drive or you cannot drive if the user has entered the age 18 or 19 or 20 or any that is greater than 18 so this statement is going to be executed where it says you are allowed to drive if it is not true if the condition is not right it is uh, so what will happen the second statement is going to be executed understood means the use the user enters the age for example the user has entered the age of nine years so in this statement in the statement in number three the computer will check the condition the value of age is going to be is uh, whether it is uh, greater than or equal to 18 or not no we have entered the value 9 then in this condition what will happen the statement number 4 is not going to be executed but the uh, statement number 6 will appear is going to be executed and on a screen it will appear print you cannot drive we will discuss it uh, later in, in the next slide so no need to worry about it if you have any confusion in it let's move to the fourth part and that is looping or iteration or repetition sometimes we need to execute some of the statements again and again several times repeatedly so for that purpose we need not to write the same thing again and again 10 times if you want, for example in this program you can see that it says your uh, for count is equal to 1 to 10 then in the second statement it says print Allah means the name of Allah will appear on the screen and then the next count in the beginning with the help of these two statements for our next what we are going to do we are going to set the value of count from 1 to 10 means initially the value of count will be 1 okay and then it will print the name Allah and then next count means the count value will increase by one and it will, it will become two okay so this thing will happen how many times 
from 1 to 10 it means it will it is going to help uh, it is going to be performed the name allah will appear on your screen 10 times okay one by one the value of count is will increase from 1 to 10 and whatever the statement or statements you have written between these two for or next statement these these statements are going to be executed that many times that you have decided you have set here okay so this is this is one example of looping and repetition so let's move further firstly we will discuss about the selection statements there are two different types of selection statements in the, or the conditional statements one of them is if then else and if and the second one is case of otherwise and case as we have already discussed that in the selection statements we execute some of the statements when any uh, uh, we set some criteria we decide some criteria at the beginning and according to that criteria we execute the different instructions as you can see in this program that is written here it says print enter percentage okay this is the message it will appear on the screen first okay after this message what is going to happen the user will enter the percentage and whatever the value we will enter we will uh, give it will be stored in this variable that is purse after that it will be checked whether the value of percentage is greater than or equal to 80 if it is greater than or equal to 80 then this statement is going to be executed if it is not greater than or equal to 80 then it will move this statement is not going to be executed and then it will check the statement number five and it says else if the percentage is greater than or equal to 70 means let's see let's run the program for example in the beginning i have given the value of purse 80 so what will happen a star will appear but if i do not enter a 80 value or i enter some other value like 60 so what is happening it is checking if the percentage is greater than or equal to 80 no because i entered 60 here so what will happen it will ignore this statement the statement number four and then come to the statement number five and then the statement number five will be checked whether it is greater than or equal to 70 still it is not greater than or equal to 70 then it will this statement is also be going to be ignored and then it will come to the statement number seven when the condition becomes true when the condition becomes true then the statement is going to be executed will be executed and b will appear on the screen okay so you must have understood that how the if then else and and if condition statement works after that there is a case of otherwise and case statement when we prefer when do we use the case of otherwise and case statement you will also understand here let's see i have written another program using case statement as you have seen in this program in the first program we had several different conditions when we have multiple conditions different conditions then we prefer to use case statement we do not go with the if then else as you can see here there are 15 statements written and there are only 10 statements written and the same program will perform let's see what is happening in this if i have given the value 70 what is happening in the first statement enter percentage the message will appear secondly input percentage i have entered 70 here then it will check the case the percentage that i entered here it is of greater than or equal to 80 no so this line number four will be ignored 
and it will jump to the line number five. When the statement becomes true, then whatever the statement is written ahead, the same thing is going to be executed. So print A, A will appear on the screen. Okay, so these are the selection statements. So what we should understand at this point, we should know that when we have the multiple conditions and we are going to execute the different statements based on the different conditions, several different conditions. So in this case, we prefer to use case of otherwise statement. If not, if there are no so many uh, uh, conditions or criteria, so it is better to use if then else because it is easier. You have seen. And why do we prefer to use the case of? Because it is the simplified version of this program. Okay, and it is very, very important point when we are writing a program that our program should be simple, simplified. It should has less statements. Okay. So let's move further to the second part. And that is all about looping statements. As we have discussed that looping is the repetition means when you want to execute one or several different statements repeatedly several times again and again, then we use looping statements. So there are three different type of looping statements. The very first one is for to next. The second one is while do and while. And the third one is repeat until. So firstly, we will discuss about the for to next statement. As you can see here, it is also called the counter loop. Okay. So the for to next is in the for to next statement, as we have seen previously, that we in the beginning, we decide that how many times the program is, is going to be executed for count is equal to zero to 10 means now in this statement, the value of count at the beginning will be zero and it will be increases one by one till 10 and whatever the statements are written between these two statements for and next, these statements are going to be executed that many times. So what will happen here? Initially, the count value is zero. Then it will print count means the value of count zero will appear. Then the computer will come in the, uh, the processor will run the second, third statement and it says next means the next value of count. The count value will be increased by one. If that was zero before, now it will become one. So in the next statement, number two, the print count one will be printed. And the same thing will happen again and again 11 times. Okay. There is one more. Uh, in the syntax, you can see there is one uh, other way of writing the and uh, using the 402 next statement. We can also use the statement step. So now in this state, in this program, what is going to be happen? Let's see. For count is equal to zero to 10, as we have discussed earlier, the count value initially will be zero and then it will increase, it will be increased by one and till 10. But here we have written two. So initially the value will be zero and the print count, the zero will appear. But when it will say next, after that, after the zero, one is not going to be added into the zero, means it will be taking the two steps. Now it is ignoring one. So the first value was zero, the second value become two by ignoring one. And then it will print the value of count and that it was two. And after that, again, when it will come to the next statement, again, the step two, so it will ignore number three and it will print four here. So in this program, the output, as we see here in this screen, is from zero till 10. It is ignoring some of the numbers. Okay. 
In the first program, it was taking the step one by one. It was increasing the value of count one by one. But here in the second program, the value of count is increasing not by one, by two. Okay. So that is called the counter loop because we have a count value in it and that is increases usually by one or as per our requirement. These two different loops, while, do and while, and repeat until, these two loops are actually the conditional loops. So let's discuss about the while, do and while conditional loop first. And that is also called the precondition loop because in this loop, while, do and while, we write the condition before starting the loop. If the condition is true, if the condition is true, then the loop is going to be executed. The statements that are written under these while and n while, these statements are going to be executed when the condition is true. If the condition is not true, then these statements will be ignored. Okay, so let's see what is happening in this program. Initially, the value of count is zero. Okay, so what is happening here? It is checking the value of count is less than or equal to 10. Yes, of course, it is zero. So what is happening next? It is printing the value of count. So zero appears here. But after that statement, in the statement number four, you can see the value of count is going to be incremented by one. We are adding one into the previous value of count. The previous value of count was zero that had been printed. Now one is added into it, it will become one. So again, the condition will be checked. This condition is going to be checked again. If the condition is if the count the value of count is less than or equal to 10 yes of course it is one so now again it will print the value of count so one will appear on the screen and then it will come to the line number four and it will be checked again so it will happen till 10 when the value of count becomes 10 and here the 10 is printed on the screen then what will happen the value of count will be increased by one and it will become 11. And then it will come back to the line number two and it will be checked while the count value is less than or equal to 10. No, no, it is not less than or equal to 10 because it has become 11. So these lines are not going to be executed and the loop will, is, will be ended here. Okay, so that is the precondition loop in which we write the condition at the beginning of the loop. If the condition becomes true, then the statements that are written under the loop, these statements are going to be executed. Otherwise they are ignored. Okay. The second one repeat until loop is actually a post condition loop. In this loop, we write the condition at the end, the criteria at the end of the loop, not at the beginning, just like while. In the while we were writing the criteria at the start of the loop. But in the post condition loop, we define the criteria at the end. That's why it is called the post condition loop. These, both of them, both the loops, the statements, while, do, and while, and repeat until, they both are the conditional loops. Okay. Now let's see how the post condition loop works. In the beginning, the value of count the count is a variable, the value of count is zero. Then it says repeat and print count. The value of zero is, will appear on the screen. Okay, after that, in the line number four, what is happening? We are increasing the value of count by one. Okay, so we have given, we have added one into the previous value of count, it will become one and then it will check, the program will check, whether the count value is greater than 10. No, it is not greater than 10. So the condition is false here. It is not true. When it is false, then the program will go back to the repeat statement and the same thing, the statement number four is going to be executed and now one will appear on the screen. Okay, 
again the same thing will happen the uh, the value of count will be increased by one and then again it will be checked whether the count value is greater than 10 no it is not greater than 10 then it will go back to the line number two and then line number three and print the value of two the same process will be performed again and again till the value of 10 will appear on the screen when the value of 10 will appear on the screen again what will happen the value of count will be increased by one now it will become 11 in line number five when it will check the process will check that the count value is greater than 10 yes it is greater than 10 so the program will be stopped so what is happening in while do and while loop the loop was executed when the condition was true and repeat until the loop statements were executed are executed again and again when the condition is false but here you need to understand one very important thing that uh, as you see here in the while and while loop it was checking the condition the criteria at the beginning if the conditions were true then they were executed if it became false at the beginning for example the count value is zero here if i do not write zero here and i make it 11 at the beginning so what will happen here when it will come to the line number two and it will see it it will check that the count value is greater than or equal to uh, 10 less than or equal to 10 no it is it will be false so these statements will not be executed and they will be ignored but here in post condition loop even though if i make it 10 in the beginning or 11 in the beginning if i make it 11 in the beginning so what will happen it will see this statement number two repeat then it will it will come to the line number three and it will print the value of count means if the value of count was 11 so 11 will be printed it will appear on the screen and then the count value will be increased by one and it will become 12 and then it will be the condition will be checked whether it is true or untrue so it was actually false at the very beginning because the count value at the beginning was 11 that we decided but this these statements will be executed at least once in while and while loop it was not, it was not happening okay so these are very very important points that you should remember that in the precondition loop the uh, the criteria or the condition is checked before executing the looping statements if they are true then they are going to be executed then they will be performed otherwise they are ignored in the post condition loop even though the condition is true at the very beginning the uh, statements that are written under these loop repeat and until these will be executed at least once okay and the precondition loop works when the condition is true and post condition loop works when the condition is false so let's move to the next slide and you can see there are some basic differences that i have written here repeats the statement or statements when the condition is true the very first thing secondly that you have to remember while do and while checks the condition at the beginning of the loop and the third thing if the condition is untrue it does not execute the statement whereas in repeat until statement repeat statements uh, in this loop repeats the statement when the condition is false okay and it checks the condition at the end of the loop and it executes the statements at least once okay so these are some of the basic points that you have to remember in the examination uh, in the paper paper two now they have started asking some of the questions theoretical based questions so they can ask you that what are the main differences between the 
precondition the post condition loop or while do while and return to loop so these are the main differences that you have to remember a part of these two uh, conditional loop we have one more looping statement and that is counter loop for to next and we have seen that one as well so now let's move to the next slide and see that what we discussed in the beginning now do you know that what is the construct control what is the importance of the sequence what are the assignment repeat until uh, sorry loop uh, and uh, looping statements and the repetition statements and what about the selection condition statements okay so if you can answer these questions if you know about them so there are some questions for you you can make the pseudo code of these questions okay so the in the very first question it says write a pseudo code that generates a list of odd numbers means uh, from 1 to 100 from the first number should be printed on the screen will be 1 the second one should be 3 then 5 then 7 and so on the last number that will appear on the screen will be 99 okay so you have to write a pseudo code of these some of these questions okay uh, when you write uh, you can give the comment section i will check and if there are any errors so i will let you know thank you very much